pace car heading to pit road. It's time to push your chips in and lay your cards on the table. We are ready to go Xfinity racing here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Immediately see them three wide. They spun the tires a little bit on the start, and you see them three wide for the lead right off the bat. As they go into turn three here, this is where the wind's going to be really sketchy for them. We're getting a big push down the back stretch, big tailwind here. When you get into the corner, this is where it's going to be a handful. No fear, AJ Allmendinger. Ah, wouldn't put it against him to put it three wide on the start, but uh, didn't deter him with that wind going into the first turn. Chandler Smith coming out with the uh, with a good launch, good restart, and the lead. Look uh, at Custer. It's unbelievable. You saw none of them made the bottom in turns three. They all overestimated the grip level. And it's still three wide around here. Bennett transportation on board camera. This is Austin Hill inside of AJ Allmendinger. Battle for second. Three bumper clear, clear. Three quarter back, one up. Hill is through. Custer trying to come with him. Cole's done a good job at uh, minimizing the loss here from the, from the start of that race, being able to wrap that bottom and put AJ in a tough spot to, uh, to get here into turn one. What a great start to this race for Chandler Smith. They really got hooked up to get on that restart. And, and this track's fast enough that, that the dirty air does matter in these Xfinity cars. And being able to get good restarts, get your track position locked down for the first, you know, 10, 15 laps of the run until you really get into that tire wear is super critical. So uh, having, that, having that inside lane really jammed up and, and, and have the energy really pays off for Chandler. It definitely seems like for whatever reason here at this racetrack, the bottom's pretty dominant here early in a run. It, it'll be interesting to see as tires fall off. How wide does it get? One and two, this is typical. You want to run the second lane a lot of times because the bumps aren't as big in the second lane. But in three and four, it just seems like a bottom type corner, especially at the flat entry that you see right here. I'll tell you what, John Hunter Nemechek has gained a ton of spots and he's clamping right rears left and right here to get the momentum. And I think he's going to be able to get Austin Hill right off the of turn four. And, and it goes to show how solid that thing is, is he did that on the outside. Super after confident. Just said. No, no, it's, it's, no, you're exactly right, Joey. That, that outside lane in three and four, he must have a really good car to be able to make that work and, and clamp that right rear, put Austin Hill in a bad aero spot and uh, drive off into second fall on his teammate. Nemechek was outside the top 10 in practice. Not great in qualifying, but he has served noticed early. He's going to be a player in the runner up position behind his teammate Chandler Smith, who's led the first four laps. How about Ryan Sieg up into the top five, up six spots since the start of the race? This is a track that he's he's run pretty well at in the past, and he's uh, he's challenging Cole Custer right now for that for that spot. You see those bumps, you see the 91 there, just going through the bumps, the front end moving all over the place. You hit those bumps the wrong way, especially with low air pressures, and they're starting to come up now at lap six. But the first couple laps, you know, these cars, they want to be down on the splitter, and they start hitting it, and up the racetrack you go, you're all over the place. Do that while you're two or three wide the first couple laps, not knowing exactly how your balance is going to be. It's, it'll get your attention. The heart rate peaks pretty early in this race. No, and since these guys have been on track, there's been a full truck race, Cup Series practicing, qualifying. The conditions are different. We've already touched on the wind. It's uh, it's a lot to figure out what your car is doing in traffic and, and, and what it was like versus practice yesterday and not lose momentum, not lose the spots. And it's, uh, yeah, it's fun, these starts of the race. Yeah, this is a fun view. I love this view. You can kind of see, you know, if you're Riley Herps here, you're just trying to peek your left front out a little bit. You're hoping that car in front of you as the caution comes out here. Eight laps in, first caution of the afternoon. And it's oh, the uh, man we were talking about, Parker Retzloff, left rear. Oh, wow. That's quite a bit of damage uh, as that thing blew apart the left rear there. Run, run tenth when that happened. Talked about the fact he was so good in practice, qualified in the top five. See a 31 oh, wow. he's sideways back there. So it could be one of two things. You can either get the, the tire rub early in a run and have too much of it as you, as you travel the car at, at, at peak pace or on low air. Um, or he might have had contact with somebody else as Joey's figuring out the telestrator here. It took it. him 250 oh. miles last week at Atlanta. That's a pretty good size hit there. Yeah, I wonder how much damage that did to the one car as well. Right on that right rear. He's on pit road. 
Sam Mayer in the one. Early caution at Vegas. Chandler Smith out front. Nemechek, Hill, Almendinger, Custer, your top five. Under caution early here at Las Vegas, Parker Retzloff, heavy damage on the left rear, and he's made a couple of trips down the pit lane. And Sam Mayer, as the fellas talked about going to break, had some heavy contact as well. He went to the garage. Eric Almirola has the 19 on pit road, getting some assistance from his team. Well, we talk about the wind here at Las Vegas and what an impact it's going to have on this race and for the drivers and teams. It's impacted our team as well because of all the wind. It's dangerous for some of our camera operators to be out on those high cameras. So as you can see, they are unmanned. A little bit of a different mindset with our production today. We hate that, but we want to make sure we err on the side of safety. And as we look at our Fox weather, you can see why. Gust today at 70 miles per hour. It is a good day to be a kite, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you spend all night writing that or I'll, what? I'll give Greg Irwin credit to that one. He walked up to me in the garage yesterday and hit me with that one. I'm like, yep, using that on TV. <laughs> hey, let's give some love to Justin Allgaier. Started in the back after that issue in qualifying yesterday, up to 14th, 10 laps in. Perfect case scenario for them, too. Getting this, getting this caution, re-rack him, get another restart in. like that before, have you, Eddie? Negative. The gray-haired Justin, not the uh, young and tenacious Justin. So I like it. I didn't race against the gray-haired one. <laughs> <laughs> I know that for sure. <laughs> We, we all think that we, we uh, mature as we get older, but sometimes when you put the helmet on, that all pretty much goes out the window and you just still make pretty aggressive moves. So big, big decisions happen here with the choose. We got Chandler Smith picking the outside, his teammate on the bottom. And uh, the outside lane obviously didn't work on the initial start of the race for Cole Custer. And the inside lane was able to get way more organized. 
and the only thing that's changed here is we've got a heat cycle on these tires. We've got, you know, 10 laps in or whatever, and, and these Xfinity cars definitely react negatively, some of them worse than others with, with these heat cycles, and it, it's going to definitely play a role in this restart. Yeah, and something we saw in the initial start is Cole Custer spun his tires, so he lost control of the race before he got into turn one. He wasn't able to stay door to door and pin that inside car, take the air off his door. He kind of lost that control when he spun his tires and the bottom was able to be more organized, like you said, Austin. So we'll see how that works. You know, wheel spin is definitely going to be worse this time with a cycle on the tires. And you know, I'm Nemechek's team, I'm telling him, hey, AJ's behind you and he put him three wide and turn one lap one. So <laughs> <laughs> keep looking in your mirror. <laughs> and Chandler Smith, feels like this place owes him one. He was leading, coming Absolutely. to the white flag in this race a year ago. Overall, though, 141 laps led in the two races here compared to 178 in the other 31 races of his rookie campaign. But no doubt he's matured. He's with a new team. He's got a great veteran crew chief in Jeff Mendering. And, and I was talking to Jeff in the garage this morning, and he said across the board, this team is just really gelled. They have a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence in Chandler. And he said that's come from all of the time they've spent in the sim since they left Phoenix in, in November. Yeah, Chandler's done a really good job at the start of this year. He's been super reliable, been able to get good finishes, and uh, obviously experienced crew chief with Jabbo. He's, he's able to, to get a, a good run here to, to, to start the deal, and, and um, obviously that team feels pretty confident. Nemechek won seven races for the coach a year ago, but a lot of new faces at JGR in 2024. Sheldon Creed nearly won at Daytona, two top fives to begin the year, came over from RCR. We mentioned Chandler, who last year in his rookie season driving for Colic, but he was a part of the Toyota family at Kyle Busch Motorsports in the Craftsman Truck Series, and we touched on Eric Almirola, who, by the way, made his cup debut for Joe Gibbs Racing here at Las Vegas almost 17 years ago to the day. That's what wow. that's what I'm really curious on seeing how Eric's able to do. He's such an experienced race car driver, to your point, 17 years in the sport. He's seen a lot, done a lot of things. <clears throat> I'm just interested to see how he's going to be adapting back to an Xfinity car. They drive so different than the cup cars he got used to for years. Now it's going to be quite the change for him as he uh, progresses through the field here today. We had added a lap there, but the debris is all cleaned up from our first caution. feel like every time we come to Las Vegas, and it happened last year, you get a caution in the first 10 laps. Everyone settles in that final stage. You get long green flag runs. Teammates on the front row, Chandler Smith outside of John Hunter Nemechek. We get a note here that the, the 19 saying the 31 may have a flat tire on the start, so this will be an interesting start. There you see a much more solid start on the outside row here. Oh, AJ, three wide. Who'd have thought? <laughs> this is like a replay of the start of the race when Almendinger gets out of line. It's really in the good. middle, going backwards is Nemechek. And it really worked out for AJ making that move as he gets up to second. Yeah, it really killed John Hunter there. Um, not, able to, not able to keep the pack. Middle of three, bad arrow spot. Parker Kligerman making it happen. That orange and white Chevrolet down low. Now he's put in the middle coming off a of four. Momentum on these restarts is, is very, very important. Just making sure you don't have a chance where you have to lift. You have to lift for a bad arrow spot. You got people on your door. That's that's obviously what's happened to Parker here. He, one moment he had momentum and then it's, then it's all gone. Exit of four. Three wide again. Riley Herbst trying to wrap that line. And that's going to become a line that's going to be way more important as the tires age here. That's how Riley honestly won this race last time we were here, being super disciplined in that line, having good turn throughout a run. And I, I think he knows that. And I think he's going to be committed to that because he saw what, it, what the dividends that it paid later on. For second, Austin Hill driving through underneath Almendinger. Custer right there as well. Come up and take that down the back stretch here. Chandler Smith, he's, he's fired off both these restarts and got himself out there. That car is... Liking that clean air, what I'm interested to see is, is John Hunter Nemechek. Not a good restart there, but we saw how fast he was right before that caution. And he's picking his way back through there. He's still got a really fast car. So John Hunter just made a decision. He could have made it three wide there with that momentum he had off the corner. He decided to push Cole Custer through, trap AJ on the bottom, knowing that this momentum on the outside is going to clear him on exit. Very smart move. 
A ton of give and take. More three wide coming off the corner there. Elton Creed not afraid to put on the top top there. Allgaier up to 11th after starting in the back. The seven's got some electricity early. I tell you what, this is a racetrack that I circle for Justin Allgaier next to Bristol, Phoenix, and I would say Vegas is right up there with it. So I think he brings something a little extra special to the table as you see uh, a lot of blocking for position error on the on the Corey Heim. <laughs> These guys are racing hard. They are all over this racetrack, sliding around. You see them, they're having a hard time hitting the bottom as they're two, three wide. <laughs> it just hasn't stopped. Mentioned Sam Mayer took his Chevy to the garage. Regan? Well, Adam, tough start to the year for Sam Mayer. A lot of bad luck so far this season. Sam, what have you got to do to shake this bad luck? Yeah, I don't know. It's just a year from hell. It's been unreal. I feel like we haven't really done anything wrong except for be right where everyone else is wrecking. So it's just part of the gig, I guess. But our club car Camaro was really good this weekend. I was really looking forward to seeing what we could do. I, I think that that race, we were ready super positive um, compared to practice. So very unfortunate. Um, I think I have a total of like 200 laps this year. So um, very, very frustrating and unfortunate. And I mean, I just can't wait to get to Phoenix. All right, see you in Phoenix. Thanks, Sam. I would say 200 laps is the over. Early crashes at Daytona and here at Las Vegas. The racing, though, right now, unbelievable. That's his teammate, Brandon Jones, going after Riley Herbst. It looks like these guys are able to take advantage of Riley a little bit here. He's he's struggling to hold the line with if he's getting loose or if he just uh, can't can't keep it. There's a pretty sweet little oh, crossover. Oh, oh. He's out. See him get tight on the door of the eight. He starts seeing them feather and cars changing <laughs> speeds. <laughs> it got a little tight there. And you see Algar still moving forward. He'll grab another spot out of that. When you drive these Xfinity cars, you can really see when somebody's vulnerable and take advantage of it, whether if that's packing air on the left rear, getting air on the door. You don't see that as much in, in the Cup Series uh, anymore, but trucks and Xfinity, it's, it's a very real thing, and you can easily take advantage of somebody that's pretty vulnerable. This is our Ford Performance onboard camera, riding with Riley Herbst, who's currently in the eighth position. Chandler Smith showing the way in Las Vegas. Halfway home in stage one, we're going side by side.
Tomorrow on Fox, Caitlin Clark, the all-time NCAA women's scoring leader, is only 18 points away from Pistol Pete's NCAA scoring record. Now in her final home game, she leads Iowa against second-ranked Ohio State. Witness history tomorrow, 1230 Eastern on Fox. Go ahead, Logano. Work the 22 with the double deuce. <laughs> They're strong this weekend. Look out. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Look at the advantage for Chandler Smith right now. Pulling away from his teammate, Nemechek, who after sliding on the restart is rebounded. Just got by Cole Custer for second. Here we see Ryan Ellis get really loose right there. We don't know what happened. We don't have all the cameras up top because of the wind, but obviously a huge save. Right there. I could tell you what, if he was loose before after sliding like that, he's really loose now as he took a little bit of life off those rear tires. He was 20th, fell back to 26, but is rebounded up to 24th. Let's go to Josh. Yeah, and just for an update of the two of Jesse Love, I talked to him earlier today, and he's talking about the fact that this is the first race this season. They didn't qualify on the pole, but he said last night they spent a lot of time working, learning what he was missing in practice. He said he had to try a lot of things, being that this is his first time here. It's going to be a learning process, but that's not hurting the confidence that that two car and that two team has heading into this race. You know, Jesse Love, an incredible start of the season on the super speedways. This is such a different racetrack. As you see the 97 of Van Gisbergen on pit road opening the hood. Not good, Regan. Yeah, Joey, he radioed in about a lap ago. The temperatures are rising on that car, inside that car on the oil temperatures. The next lap, he said the team called him to the pit box and get in here immediately. That's tough. I mean, the lack of experience that Shane brings to the table on, on these ovals, especially the mile and a half tracks, is going to be the biggest difference for him. And to lose that experience uh, that I'm sure he was really looking forward to this weekend is definitely going to sting. Hopefully he gets back out there. He also didn't get much practice either. No. They had a hard time through tech. They only got a few laps of practice, really fighting from behind the eight ball a little bit. But he was hanging tough, 23rd, right around where he qualified yesterday. And some disappointment for the rookie driver from New Zealand. See Austin Hill here trying to wrap that line. He and Cole Custer seem somewhat evenly matched here as uh, John Hunter's kind of bypassed both of them. He and Chandler Smith are, are matching lap times. If, if anything, John Hunter's, you know, a little bit quicker. Um, should be interesting to see, you know, how this progresses throughout the stand, but they've clearly separated themselves as the two dominant cars. As if you look further back in the field, some guys are actually flirting with, uh, with that outside lane. You know, Parker Kligerman, one of the first ones to do it. Justin Allgaier already up to eighth. Interesting to see how this track changes as Shane goes to the garage. What a shame there. You, know, you wonder here too, you know, overheating wise, there's a lot of garbage that gets blown onto the racetrack, you know, from the grandstands, everyone's hot dog wrappers is blown right out of their hand. And where's it go? Onto the racetrack. And I know one thing for qualifying for us, there was garbage so all over the place in turns one and two. That is something that these guys will deal with all day long, that they may get a little bit of trash up on that grill and finding ways to clear it is gonna be key. Racing for third to Veterans Hill. Here, Hill and Cole Custer. Custer just finally got a taste of that outside lane, and it seems like it's in. It's going to be in for a little while here, I think. You know, Parker Clearman was one of the first ones to go up there and do it, and uh, it's cleaned off, clearly has some speed. It's a great defense mechanism you know, for, for getting a car on your inside. Yeah, and the first couple laps up when you move up in the racetrack is always a little nerve-wracking. You're like, how hard can I push it? And then you got someone breathing down your throat here with Austin Hill trying to pass you, and you're like, I want to get a little bit higher. I want to push it a little bit more, but I don't know if it's clean or not. I don't know how much grip is going to be. Oh, no, yeah, if I make a mistake, I hit the wall, and well, it's over. And last <laughs> lap, Cole, Cole was like, oh, I'm going to split the seam and see how it feels like. That last lap, he was like, yep, it has grip. I'm going to go up there and go right above the top seam and, and carry the speed, and he's got confidence that, I mean, Austin's going to really struggle to, to complete this pass without, without that momentum. We might get him right here. No, he's not. You can see. Cole get another run down the back straightaway here. And that's something all the spotters are watching. They're saying, hey, top looks pretty good. Don't be afraid of it. And that's something I look for out of my spotter, Coleman, all the time is I might not want to be the first one up there, but I don't want to be the last either. Let me know how it looks, and then I'll, I'll give it a shot. You always want to be the second one. Second or third feels pretty good. Tell me somebody's <laughs> already done it once and not crashed. I'm, I'm thinking about going up there. Exactly. 
It's funny they came down the front straightaway and off the of turn four Custer almost at the wall. Hill cuts down below the white line on the apron as they cross the start finish line. Two schools of thought and here they are into three. Yeah it's something you could do here. You can shortcut this front straightaway quite a bit underneath the apron and you'll see that all day long. <laughs> They'll try to shortcut it. You go way down at the bottom where it says Pennzoil way down there and that's a it's a lot of distance cut off for sure but you don't get the draft that's the negative to it that was a great sponsor plug yeah and accurate information it is the Penzo 400 tomorrow it is <laughs> it is that's and the Penzo mustang is starting first by the way joey's a professional <laughs> i'll learn a few things from you <laughs> chandler smith still kicking butt advantage almost two seconds over his teammate John Hunter and Emacek. He's only been like a tenth or so faster John Hunter has over over Chandler as, as he's now kind of working into the bulk of lap traffic, which is it's difficult around these mile and a half racetracks, especially when, you know, OK, there's a dominant lane and a non dominant lane. But now the racetrack's gotten wide and the lap cars have got to figure out where they want to go. And then you got to figure out where they're going to be. It's not as straightforward anymore when there's so many lanes. So it makes it makes it harder to manage. And it's always harder to manage it as the leader. Because once you've been lapped, the lap guy just accepts the fact that he's behind people. He doesn't care about the second place car. He just lets him go. So it's a, it's a difficult spot to be in as you see AJ pushing the limits there. This is what makes this racetrack so much fun for the race car driver, that, is that you can go anywhere you want. You know, I know it's such a different style of racing. If, if you're new to NASCAR and you watch the first two weeks at Atlanta and Daytona, you see that packed super speedway racing. This is something that a lot of the drivers are more used to and the driver has more control of. You can come out of the gas, you hear him lifting right here, rolling down into the corner. Cars way up by the wall like A.J. Allmendinger. Riley Herbst at the very bottom, splitting cars. This is really, really fun. That's a good time as a race car driver. You can pick different lanes, do different things, and you're in 100% control of your destiny. It's not, I hope someone goes with me. I got to make a move, and, and hopefully my teammates near me think about these different things. This is all about you. You can be selfish as you want to be, go racing, and, and run different lanes. It is a blast as a race car driver to come to a place like Vegas. These guys still haven't left each other alone. This is getting good. As you see them, they're, they're working closer and closer to that outside wall, which tells me that, that that rubber is starting to get laid down up there and it's getting a little bit more difficult to, to run up there. As, as Riley Herbst saw him a little loose at the beginning of the run, starting to wrap this line, be disciplined. The same things that won in this race last time in the fall, getting him some spots here on this long run. Any driver that's strong right now, that's an indicator. They put the setup in, make sure we're good late in the run and could be indicative of what we will see in that final stage. Herbst, as you said, doing the things he did here in the fall, gets by Almondinger, and now peeking below his teammate as we come to four to go in the stage. Yeah, it looks really solid. I know one thing, if I'm Riley Herbst and I won by, what was it, 17 seconds? 14. 14? Oh boy. Yeah, when we come back, we're just gonna bring the same setup. <laughs> no sense of changing anything. And talk about lap traffic here, a lot of tough decisions being made, and Riley knows what his car is like on the bottom here. Is he? That's the worst spot to get a car right on your door and, and just having to give up all that momentum. Because you could see, even with three cars in front of him, Riley was still better than the double zero and the 21 at wrapping the line there. He just gets on that paint. A little bit of grip on that paint. You know, as you get down, there's a little smoother surface than the asphalt is. It grips up a little bit. If you can be disciplined enough and your car is capable of doing it, you're able to find some speed, which Riley has figured out at this track right now. I feel like it's very similar to, to how we describe, you know, old Atlanta, you know, the mm -hmm. Kevin Harvick line wrapping the paint. I feel like each year that becomes more and more relevant as this track gets age on it. It's it's been pretty interesting because I, I think the guys that they go run the top. You saw Cole run the top to defend his position. I think that just delayed the inevitable for for him to be honest. He was struggling with his car. Top's kind of a bailout. You don't see the guy winning the race. You know, pounding the boards here at Vegas. Well, two laps to go. You got to do whatever you can do to just get by the next couple. 24 cars on the lead lap. Right now, J.J. Yaley in the free pass position. So he would get that lap back once the caution comes out to end the stage if everything stays status quo here. This lead hasn't uh, hasn't changed much uh, through all the lap traffic. It's been just under two seconds the whole time. So I think pit stops are going to be super critical between restarts uh, as far as who's who's going to be able to come out on top on this deal right now. It looks like either Chandler Smith, John Hunter Nemechek, these, uh, these Joe Gibbs cars look really fast. You just don't want to lose control of the race if you're Chandler Smith, and he has been in charge so far. Qualifies on the front row, dominant in stage one. Gets the lead from the jump. 
And he's going to have the advantage for the entire 45 lap stint to begin this race. Right here. Stage one winner, Chandler Smith. He continues to impress at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Third stage win of his career. He won at Richmond last year, and that's the last time he was able to win in stage one. Perhaps some foreshadowing for later in the race for the driver from Georgia. We brought out the heavy hitters to the booth today. Austin Sendrick, a champion in the Xfinity Series, also won that race we call the Daytona 500. Logano's won a 500, two-time cup champ. They're bringing it in the booth today. They'll be bringing it on track tomorrow. All the fun begins. FS1, 2 o'clock Eastern time with race day. We're over to box at 3. At 3.30, the green flag in the air for round Number three, Logano. <laughs> 22. As if there hasn't been enough self-promotion. You go out, get P1, you're P3 tomorrow. Nice job in qualifying, and so far, good job in the booth today. Oh, thank you so far. Long <laughs> ways to go to screw this up. We have plenty of opportunity to do that, Austin. We're, we're, we're one stage in. I haven't said anything stupid yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> we're doing great. Wait, wait, wait. That, that's you talking. That's, that's a yeah. That's a big yeah. yeah. I don't know if Larry McReynolds has any stats on when I start saying stupid stuff. But these are long races. So. He had stats for everything. <laughs> I promise he's got stats on stupid stuff from no. the booth. He's always a bad influence on me, too. Oh, this is, this come is on a, This is a tough combination. Come on. Well, he laughs at everything. I like that. Like, so I just keep keep leveling up until it gets to where no one laughs. Got a, a bit of a Kenny Wallace laugh. I get it. <laughs> Joey's laughter built Not my confidence. There, no. yes. <laughs> Saw the wind. If you're just joining us on a 
Saturday afternoon from Vegas. The wind has been the theme of the day. Gusts of 70 miles per hour. In fact, we don't even have all of our, our camera folks out because it's just not safe. And I want to give a nod to the spotters up above us here in the television booth because they got a hard job as well. I think I think wind is the drinking word of this weekend. <laughs> First pit stops of the day for those running up front. And they come under caution into stage one. They're heading your way, Regan. Adam Parker Kligerman in the 48 cars. Lost one spot since the start of the race. His car as it's gone on has transitioned to very, very tight. He needs help with the car in the center of the corner. And the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger also struggling with that car being a little bit wiggly off the wall. He doesn't have the comfort that he wants as he turns off to the wall into the corner. Transitions from loose at the start of the run to very tight as the run goes on. Josh? For the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek, his biggest concern, he can't wrap the line the way he wants to in one and two. Said, I need a little more turn in the front end mid exit as far as the 81 of Chandler Smith your stage one winner at 49 laps so far said three and four is his biggest concern right now they want to help him out a little bit with that guys look like some issues on pit road for the 81 you pit pits here based on how you qualified last week and Chandler goes in the wrong direction Hill wins the race off pit road plus two Herbst was good plus two as well Smith falls back to seventh after winning the opening stage well, let's try to uh, dial up Chandler Smith, even though he just lost a bunch of spots. Hopefully he's not too sore about it. Chandler Smith, Joey Logano with the Fox booth. You got me? Yes, sir. Got you, buddy. What's up? Well, you were really fast here last year in a Collick car. You're really fast here this year in a Gibbs car. To me, there's one common denominator, the driver, and you deserve a raise. This is what we decided <laughs> in here. What do you think about that? I think you should talk to my superiors. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think us drivers need to stick together. Obviously, you got the, your work cut out for you now. They got a really fast car. You lost a few spots on pit road. How are you going to get through it? Yeah, I feel like we have a really fast number 81 quick type rock Toyota GR Supra. So it, it should be a problem here. It's definitely going to be a little different with being back in dirty air. I felt a little bit of that um, in practice and also on the green flag right from the get go, just being put three wide metal. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm excited about it, though. I feel like we have a really fast car, and hopefully we put on a decent show for you fans. Copy that. Good luck in there, man. Yeah, thanks, buddy. I love his confidence. Despite the setback on pit road, Chandler still inside the top ten. J.J. Yaley got the free pass here. We're ready for stage two when we return.
I was hoping you guys would be singing along as we come back here to Las Vegas. You got the wrong guys in the booth for that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> not, not me today. Stage points, uh, opening run of the day. John Hunter Nemechek, obviously a, a cup full timer, but the rest of the drivers that had it pay out in stage one. Chandler Smith wins the stage. Good outing for Cole Custer from the pole. Got six points. Justin Allgaier from the back to the top ten picks up four stage points. And a nice day for Ryan Sieg, who was 22nd in the first two races of the year. Starts inside the top ten and stays there. 81 team talking things over. They had an issue with the jack, so they had that extended stop. In fact, Chandler was five seconds slower than the stop of Austin Hill. That's why he's going to restart outside the top five. And as we prepare to return to the green flag, we remind you the Toyota GR Supra is leading the field today. Oh, yeah, different uh, front row here. You got Riley Herbst, who talked about how good he's been on the long haul. Now he's got some air to start. Austin Hill was pretty solid in the first stage. Right behind him, John Hunter Niebuchek, starting in that outside second row position. We see him being strong, too. Stage two, underway at Vegas. Chandler Smith took that outside lane, coming from row four. We'll see how aggressive the 81 is here. Looks like there's a bunch of trash on the grill of the 21 there. It's uh, inside lane, outside lane, pretty even going into turn three. Austin's yeah. trying to get clear. That's a huge piece of trash on, on Austin Hill's car. And as the leader, there's no one really to clear that off of. That's yeah, going to drive really nice for a little bit. That creates a lot of downforce, but you got to cool your engine somehow. Side by side for second, side by side for fourth. Getting after it on the restart. This Ooh, is hurt as tight right in front of Nemechek. Clear, got Ooh. it. Still tight. Still tight. Yeah, that's a tight clear. As a driver, you're, that, uh, nothing that ticks me off more than that. I'm like, come on, man. I was say, <laughs> he's going to remember that later in the race. And, and then Riley knows I think he's got a really fast car on a long haul. He's got to survive the first few here. Keep it, keep himself in the game. Stay close. <laughs> John Hunter Nemechek just, just took the lead pretty easily. I wonder if he was trying to get behind another car to get uh, that temp mm. off. Oh, uh, I could believe that. And he still that was, doesn't have it off. Didn't even expect that to, to happen. Pretty big momentum loss off the of four. <laughs> Great. Or he's got a problem. No, I think he's. I think you hit it right on us. That he's trying to to clear that off, Josh. And for the 21 of Austin Hill, like you guys are saying, he's got debris on the front of that car. They told him to drop back and do what you can to get low, so you can get some help to get that debris off. Yeah, you guys got to get so tight on the car in front of you to to create enough back pressure to get. Get you know the air turbulent enough basically to get that that garbage off. He's, you got to get right on somebody. And that's not a small piece either. I mean, sometimes you're thinking about like a hot dog wrapper. That looks like a plastic bag. That's and what that's I was going to say. Covered up almost the entire grill screen that's not taped over. Yeah, and he's already given up a lot of spots. You know, he's already given up four spots. He's back to fifth from the lead. It tells you how hot it's got. He's still got to do more. Almendinger comes through. He's working on a spot in the top five. Cole Custer is there in the red car, double zero. Parker Kligerman. They're all going They're by Austin Hill. Here. There, oh, it there it goes. I think it went there. Yeah, after he goes from the lead to eighth. Yeah, seventh place. He's, he's kind of holding off Parker Kligerman here. Top three getting after it. Nemechek leads. Great day for Joe Gibbs Racing. He and Chandler Smith have both led laps. Second place is Riley Herbst and Smith after the issues on pit road is right back in the game talking about Chandler in the 81. Riley's really committed to the bottom there and you can already see some of his strength come in after those first four or five laps low air kind of like what you were talking about Joey you know you get you get through that and I think Austin Hill dropping in the back really saved Riley from getting swallowed up by, by more cars behind him because it's really separated this, this front three from this this pack behind him. Yeah, and Chandler Smith, we've seen him lead so many laps there in the beginning. He's right back there after a bad pit stop, back up to third. Th this right here, I believe, is the three best cars. It might be at different points of the run, but right now there's no doubt Chandler Smith is the fastest car on the racetrack if he's able to clear the two cars in front of him. 
He's just got to race them and try to figure out a way around them. I'm not going to say leading all the laps in the opening stage is not impressive, but that clean air, as we know, is an outstanding thing to have on your side. What is impressive, you get compromised on this restart, and here he is battling through traffic and hanging with some of the other top, top cars, no doubt the 81 is a powerhouse today. Well, and the part that can change for him, you know, as he's in dirty air, you're wearing your tires differently, right? And as you're up front, you're kind of going to manage your car. You can keep the car loose or tight in certain ways just by pushing different tires. When you're in traffic, oh, there he goes. He's got a lot of confidence in his car. Yeah, that's proof entry, of it. For sure. That is incredible to be able to do that. I mean, I think, I think that's all, all you, Joey. Honestly, you pumped him up. He was down from that pit stop, and you brought him right back up. I told him he deserved a raise. I <laughs> If that doesn't prove it, guys, I don't know. I'll take my 10% later. If he buys a, <laughs> if he buys the, a boat after the race, you should get paid. I, at least you know get that? a ride on the boat <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> now we look at our Toyota top performers. Nemechek leading. He's led six laps so far here in stage two. Chandler Smith, as we said, dominant from the front row, is second right now. Sheldon Creed has been quiet outside the top 10. Eric Almirola, the extra pit stop early. He's 14th. And Corey Hahn driving for Sam Hunt, first start of the year for the full-time driver in the Craftsman Truck Series. He's been positive this weekend. Qualified inside the top 15 and 15th right now as the driver of the 26. First taker there, Eric Amarola, all the way to the outside groove. Get, kind of getting to that point of the run where we're, we're 20 laps in and tires are starting to fall off, lap times are starting to come down. And, uh, you know, Eric's, Eric's been on a slow charge back to the front here. I expect him to get better and better as this race goes on, as he starts to learn this car Woo! a little bit more. And Looks a little loose to me there. <laughs> yeah. It was going to pay off on the long run, though, be, being that free with, with, with the tight build, with the tires, all of them were talking about it. So it should be interesting to see how he goes. Cole Custer started on the pole. He's eighth right now, Josh. Yeah, the problem at the end of stage one was Cole Custer was complaining that his car was too tight. Well, they made an air pressure and a track bar adjustment at the end of the stage. Just came over the radio saying now the car is way too loose, handling worse than it did in stage one, guys. Got plenty of time to work on it, and maybe another adjustment coming here when we wrap stage two. We're almost halfway home in the second stint of the race. Nemechek leading his teammate Chandler Smith at Vegas.
how windy is it? We were watching this during the national anthem, <laughs> and I got to tell you, earning her money down there on the stage. This was just unbelievable. All these shots from pre-race and just how windy it is today in Las Vegas. Supposed to calm down for you guys tomorrow, as I understand it, looking at the forecast. So that'll help things out for the cup race. But our Fox weather, and I keep thinking there's a typo, gusting up to 70 miles per hour, but you can feel it outside for sure. I'm telling you, I, I said this before the race started. I've never been at the racetrack where it's been this windy and seen race cars go around the racetrack. The gust is what gets you. If it's a constant steady state wind, you can anticipate it. You kind of know what's coming. But when you get a big gust of wind in the middle of the corner, you are along for the ride at that point. So you see these drivers, and I got to think that a little bit in turns three and four, where a lot of the wind is pushing them down into the corner and then hitting their door. Yeah, it seems like they're hitting the very, very bottom of the racetrack or the very top up next to the wall. You got to think they're kind of shading themselves a little bit away from the wind. Let's go for a ride here with uh, Chandler Smith, second right now behind his teammate Nemechek. Chandler obviously pretty fast. Let's see how much he comes out of the gas here. Nope, maybe not. Still see the throttle there. Well, here's another young driver that's been impressive. And, and I know our expectations have gone through the roof with Jesse Love, the rookie driver for Richard Childress Racing, because he won polls the last two weeks and so close to winning last week at Atlanta. You come to this track for the first time, so much to manage, and he's hanging in there in that two car for RCR. He's challenged inside the top ten, and he's obviously shoving the eight car down into the corner. So uh, putting, up a, putting up a good fight here, trying to get stage points. And, and I think a solid top ten would be good for, for Jesse here in his first, first real mile and a half race. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, it, it's so different than super speedway racing. You have so much more to learn. And, you know, when you get in these Xfinity races, you know, the, knowing what you need in the race when you're practicing is key, right? Having it like, oh, my car drives good in practice, great. That means we need to do this, this, and this before the race starts so we're good in the race. You don't know that stuff really well until you race there a couple times. That's what makes it so hard being a rookie in this sport. Another thing hard to do the for, for the first time is manage lap traffic and uh, as the lead as a second place car as you see Chandler Smith tracking down John Hunter Nemechek he's been probably about a tenth or two faster than John Hunter each lap and you know that exit off a of two there trying to figure out where that lap car is going to go is, is one of the more challenging things to do but I, I think this is going to heat up before the end of the stage it seems like he's hanging right with him look at Riley Herbst <laughs> he's right there too we Doesn't know he's away. a long run car and he's still bottom feeding there he kind of missed the bottom a little bit in that corner I'm anxious to see what Riley does in the final stage when we get that long, long green flag run because we've had the, the medium run so far, right, in, in these first two stages, and perhaps that 98's got what it takes over the real long haul, Regan. Well, Adam, I'm, off. I'm interested to see Parker Kligerman as you see him up on the wall right now. Told me earlier today that he was going to wrap the line all day long. I was going to run nowhere other than on the white line. Well, you see now he's moved up to the top of the racetrack, started making some good time up there. Radio to a number of other teams was, hey, Parker Kligerman is making time up on the wall. You're seeing cars start to creep up to the top. These guys are going wherever they can right now to find the grip. Yeah, Parker, Parker is one of the first ones to move up top, as, as, as Regan said, and other guys have followed suit, but he's been at the leading edge, you know, pushing, pushing the gray, pushing the dust up. You know, three and four, you know, guys have comfort to do it. It's a more grip-limited corner, but one and two is pretty challenging to do it, and, and, and Parker's been doing it lap after lap and, and, and making lap time and has made some pretty good passes while doing it. We were talking about Jesse Love up to ninth now. Pass the series champ. And learning more and more as the day continues. Another sign of how talented he is and what he's going to bring to the table here as a rookie. You brought up Cole Custer, the series champ. You talked about how he say he was loose. He must be, he must be hanging on to this thing right now, hoping that you know 12 to go. Can I just get to a caution, please, to stop the bleeding? Is he just trying to survive long enough to where he can get a caution? 12 laps to go. Stage two, Nemechek, Chandler Smith, Herbst, Allgaier, Almendinger, the top five. We're side by side on FS1.
Inside of 10 laps to go, stage two at Las Vegas for NASCAR's Xfinity Series. Nemechek continues to lead, but Chandler Smith is there inside of a half a second back now. Oh, it's going to be a battle from here. Six to go at the end of the stage. This is going to be quite the cat and mouse game. Trying to find clean air is going to be everything, Austin, as a as you see Chandler on the bottom right there trying to find that clean air, this is going to be a good race. I think it's going to come down to lap traffic in, in a lot of ways. I mean, maybe maybe John Hunter's had a big enough lead. He's, he's felt like he's maybe conserved his car a little bit. There could be a little cat and mouse going on, but Chandler has been consistently knocking this lead down, but it, it's not been at a high rate of speed. You know, it's been tenths of a second throughout the entire stage. So when he gets there, it's going to be a difficult pass to make because they are so equal. But uh, no doubt, Chandler Smith has the best car here today. This is where you want a car that's versatile. I always say, I want a car when I go to Vegas that I can run the bottom and I can run the top. Because the problem is, is you're going to catch the car in front of you if you have a good car. That's great. But if you can't go somewhere else to form a run, what good is it? Well, you're I'm also stuck. very predictable. You know, John Hunter would know yes. what lane he's going to have to cover. If I, if I can only run the bottom, if I can only run the top, it's, it's very easy to manage the lead when you know where your guy's going to go. That last car they went around Jeremy Clements, he was already a lap down, so he's now two laps behind. 467 starts for Clements, top five all time in the Xfinity Series as we refocus on the top two. He's got a good little he's run. there here. now. I feel like he needs to duck to the top one of these laps. He's he's very committed to the bottom, but we've seen the top work so Ooh, far. Oh, he came up off the line a little bit. That's not quite enough. Almost enough right now for John Hunter Nemechek as the leader. It is so key. He sees that Chandler Smith cannot come off the bottom in three and four. He has to cover that paint, cover that white line. Make sure you don't give him a sniff of air at all down that left side of your car. And what Chandler's trying to do, he's trying to get that that right front headlight right on that left rear quarter. That, that's that's the game he's playing. He's he's trying to dive into the bottom, the lane he wants to be in, and basically use air to move John Hunter out of it. But he's got to be way closer than he is right now, even the last lap. But that 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 air gap right there. Joey's talking about that's Look a at huge him. opportunity. Look how much he gained too. Just gave a little gap right there. Thank you very much. I need that air. I got a huge run. And there's no lap traffic ahead of here. Two he's laps gonna be able to go. carry this momentum. Right back down to the bottom. John Hunter shuts it off, but who can hold the line better? Hear him throttle up early, able to get that sniff of clean air. Should be able to, he, I, I bet you he's going to dive down and try and pack air on this left rear if he can hold in on entry. Nemechek flirting with a wall off of turn two. Going to be one to go in the stage as they come back to the start-finish line this time. Oh, he, was, he, he chopped him on the exit there, so he was able to keep that clean air off of Chandler Smith. It's a really smart move reacting to what he did wrong the last lap. Should be a fun little finish here. And Chandler Smith has got to go to the opposite side right here. He goes to the top in one and two. So let's try to get the run off on the back straightaway. Let's clamp this right rear. Doesn't Cross happen. Over. Cross, Cross over. over. Get that side draft. What's John Hunter do here is keep him out Chandler Smith inside of his teammate. Final lap, stage two at Vegas. Got him. And there like goes the 81. He waited, he waited, he waited, and he pounced. Get out the broom, right here, Chandler right here, Smith, back, sweeping stage one and stage two. Well done. A great example of patience. Absolutely. Right there. Patient about it, waited for the mistake. Saw, you know, that John Hunter was in his mirror so much that eventually when John Hunter went to the bottom, he said, I'll take it. I'll go to the top. Last really week. Good. Jesse Love swept stage one, stage two at Atlanta. Today, Chandler Smith able to get it done. And here's the move on his teammate. 81's got big time speed today.
Stage two is done in Las Vegas for NASCAR's Xfinity Series. Pit road is open. It's going to be Chandler Smith, Nemechek, Herbst, Allgaier, and Allmendinger. Here they are, Regan. Well, Adam, the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger continues to have a solid day, running in fifth place right now. Still struggling with the entry just a little bit, though. The race car is very edgy, meaning it's wiggling around as he turns into the corners. Overall, the car is too tight the rest of the way around the corner. Wants to be freed up just a little bit for that. Josh? For the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek, he said they fired off a touch free, and it got freer as that run went along. He said, overall, I just need more grip. And moving on to the 81 of Chandler Smith has swept the stages so far. Remember, they had an issue with the jack on pit road last time just want a clean stop here guys race off pit road is going to be big who takes control for the final stint of the race riley herps jumps out chandler smith is there give it to the 81 then it's the 98 nema check goes one in the wrong direction plus two for austin hill and uh jesse love showing seventh coming off the pit lane almost halfway home in las vegas final stage coming your way next it's been a great afternoon for chandler smith Fired up about this, the National Rugby League will kick off their season from Allegiant Stadium here in Vegas tonight with a doubleheader on FS1. The Manly Sea Eagles get the South Sydney Rabbitohs at 9.30. Then at 11.30 Eastern time, the Brisbane Broncos get the Sydney Roosters. Russell Crowe, part owner of the Rabbitohs, while Hugh Jackman is a lifelong Sea Eagles fan. And how about this? Your, your teammates over there doing a little jersey swap. I tell you, Ryan Blaney is an incredible athlete, but I tell you one thing, if he played rugby, I think he would get annihilated because those guys are huge. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little guy. He's a good athlete, but he does not belong. Well, there's a reason they didn't invite guys. us, Joey. Not that sport, because no, we're not great athletes. No, no. <laughs> no Here's not the of that stage time. point breakdown. <laughs> Jesse Love getting four after qualifying 15. Chandler Smith dominates the day, sweeping the stages. Good afternoon for Herbst Hill, Almadinger, and Allgaier from the back. 
pretty interesting shoes here. Chandler Smith chose the outside, it's worked out for him, but Riley Herbst from second chose uh, outside right behind him. So Riley either feels like this is a higher percentage move or uh, really feels like he can deliver a good push here to keep his second place spot. Well, keep weird it on. because he's such a bottom guy the whole race so far. He gave up the front row. I, I'm, you'll see how this works. Keep an eye on Kligerman, too. Went from 8th to 13th on pit road, so he's got some ground to make up in the final stage. Good equal push. Riley was able to stay pretty well connected for the outside lane. Hopefully see this opportunity play out. In this fight for clean air, this is a huge deal. We, we talked about it. We, we may be setting up for a long green flag run. You want to be able to secure that clean air as soon as possible to start managing your car as the two Gibbs cars are fighting for the win here, or the lead. We've talked about... Chandler Smith being able to pass him at the end, but that took the entire stage running all green for him to finally come back up and pass John Hermine check for the lead. So to your point, this is this this is absolutely control of the race. You need to fight hard right now for this. So Just many times wow. that inside lane will tease you only to have the outside lane and all that momentum went out, but they continue to battle side by side. Nemechek and Chandler Smith, 20 all clear up in front of the 81. Yeah, what, what happened is John Hunter Nemechek did a great job of side drafting Chandler Smith at the right point, got him at his right rear quarter entering the corner, not to worry at the door. If there's a car door to door, that's your worst aero spot as a car that's on the bottom of the racetrack. He got him to his quarter, able to drive it in there really hard, clear him, set sail. Austin Hill, who had lost all that track position when he had the debris on the grill, leading early in stage two, he's back in it, up in fourth. Good pit, pit work by the 21 team. You know, and the more I think about it, we talk about, you know, maybe Riley just laid up there, but he knows already that his car isn't a very good short run car. He seems like he's loose, builds better and better as the run goes. So picking the top, maybe that was just a, hey, I know this ain't going to be my deal if I get under the leader here. Let's see if I can just conserve as we see Chandler Smith fighting back. Get that side draft like you talked about, Joey. You're going to see John Hunter trying to get to that right rear quarter panel, gets there, loses downforce, definitely going to hurt Chandler off the corner as uh, John Hunter's going to try and avoid the side draft down the front straightaway. Gets him pretty hard going into turn one. Hey, we talked about how hard these guys are racing right now. Neither one of them gave up the outside when they were running hard with each other. No one's letting them have it. Nemechek so good in the Xfinity Series last year, winning seven times for Joe Gibbs Racing, making it to the championship four. Opened up the door for a cup ride. He's back full time on Sundays, running for Legacy Motor Club, and gonna run a number of races back in the Xfinity Series for JGR. And looking good today, but so is Chandler Smith, one of the young stars in the sport, and trying for his second career victory this afternoon. If you're Chandler, you love the idea of you're racing against Cup Guy. He's not racing against Nemechek for points, but he's racing him hard because he wants to steal that lead. He's in the same equipment. He wants to prove that he, he's good enough to make it to this next level. That's, that's what all these guys are here to do in this Xfinity Series is to try and move up and, and, and race in the Cup Series. And uh, Chandler's making a great case that uh, he's very capable behind the wheel of this car. Clear. Huh. Copy that. All right. I guess we're going to sit on each other in the door. <laughs> no, it's, you know, it's, it's always different. Also, you, you can understand, too, is, is racing with your teammates is maybe the most complicated thing you can possibly do because the, the rules are, are just different, right? Like, if, if that wasn't his teammate and they're racing door to door, no problem. Everything's good, right? And then with you, your teammate, you're like, hey, like, we're supposed to take care of each other. What's going on? But I want to win, too. But I want to win, too. Like, it just it gets really confusing and hard to do at any level. Let's go down to Regan. Well, Adam, a relatively quiet day right now for Sheldon Creed running in the 15th position, of course, riding a, a rather lengthy top five streak right now. Going to need some good things to happen for him in order to continue that streak. Struggling with the race car right now. It's on top of the track. Can't get the car to do what he wants as he turns into the corner. And interesting from Sam McCauley, his crew chief, told him we really need to make hay on the first 20 laps of a run. Joey, you guys know up there, first 20 laps, easiest time to pass. That's when his car is the worst right now, though. Yeah, it's tough. It, you, know, you want to hammer down as soon as you can and get that track position as quickly as possible, if you can. 
the tough part is, is when you can't, you, you sometimes can make it worse because you're trying to make big, bold moves that your car just can't do. And sometimes you have to accept that, you know what, my car just doesn't fire off as fast as I wanted to today. I need to play defense instead of offense and not lose any spots here so I can it, take the advantage of the long run speed that I have late in the run. The separation is just so much greater. You know, if, say, I want to be better, I have to be so much better on a long run to make up three or four spots. And on a short run, three or four spots might just be one good corner, dive down to the inside and clear a few of them, you know? So it's uh, it's way better to be good on the short run and, and, and just have to defend on the long run, especially in these, in these shorter races. Two great veterans racing for fourth on board with Austin Hill, who won the first two races of the year, won this race a season ago. Just behind him, Justin Allgaier coming from the rear today. Mentioned Parker Kligerman lost some spots on pit road in that last exchange, but he's working his way back to the top ten, jumping in front of Brandon Jones in the nine. Keep a keep a camera on Parker throughout this stint as well. He's going to be the first one to move up. He's been that way the last two stages. I think he's going to, well, as somebody else moves up before Parker. There we go. But uh, Parker's been making a lot of a lot of hay on, the, on that top lane, and he seems to be a believer, contrary to what he thought before the start of the race. Let's give a shout out too to Anthony Alfredo. They had a tire issue yesterday. Hit the wall in practice. They took their Phoenix car, which was their backup for here, converted it to run on the intermediate. That, that is not plan A for any race team. They have done it. They've stayed on the lead lap, and he's knocking on the door of the top 15. Awesome effort by everyone at our motorsports. And look who's racing with him. It's Josh Williams in the 11. Two finishes outside the top 30 to begin the year. Not great in qualifying yesterday. And now they're in the top 20. And there's Kyle Weatherman in the 91. Nice effort in qualifying yesterday. Congratulations to him, married in the offseason. And just behind him, the recently engaged Haley Deegan, one of our Rookie of the Year contenders. She's inside the top 20 for AM Racing. Made her first ever start in the Xfinity Series here a couple of years ago. Finished inside the top 15. As Still battling for the lead right here. Chandler Smith getting back underneath John Hunter Nemechek. Looks like he's going to be able to clear him pretty early into the corner here. It's like Nemechek. So okay. just accepted that. You're faster than me. All right. You know, it's, it's hard to give up a spot early in the run because your air pressures are low, and it's hard to say, maybe I'm going to get pretty fast here in about three laps. I'd hate to give up the spot because in three laps, I might be able to hold you off. I think at this point, you know, they've run 10 laps or so since the restart. They say, all right, you got me. Yeah, I think I think that was a smart move by John Hunter. Conserve his car. If they're going to race hard, they're going to bring this 98 back into the picture. I think it uh, should be interesting how this plays out. Herbst only a second back right now. Chandler Smith has led 58 laps. 90 to go in Vegas for the Xfinity Series.
We talk about bow ties and the importance of coming prepared. I mean, Joey, how do we look here? Joey's but never looked to, better. You had to put a bow tie on me because there's one thing. I'm not wearing a bow tie, guys. That's just where I'm drawing the line. What's wrong there. with that, Joey? Tell the people. I, I What's just, wrong I with wearing a bow tie? I just can't pull it off. I just don't. Maybe I'm not cool enough. I don't know. I always go for the tie. I just can't. You do the bow tie at the banquet and everything, don't you? Yeah, that photo was yeah. for the banquet. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm more just. A, I'm just a tie guy. I don't know. I just like. One, I don't know I don't, how to tie a bow tie. I'll be honest, That's Joey, I don't care about how you dress. This race for the lead's getting pretty good, though. I think you're wearing a clip-on. <laughs> <laughs> don't even start with me. Don't even start with me. Hey, look, look at these numbers for Chandler Smith. You saw him there. He's led over 200 laps in three starts at Vegas, and we have over 80 laps to go today. The other 38 races in his career, 178 out front. He just loves this place. He's really got this track figured out. You know, and, and we talked about this. It's not just being able to make a fast lap. It's knowing what you need in your race car to run fast in the race. Short run, long run, moving around. This track, it seems like once you kind of get a hang of what you need, you, you can really help the crew chief a lot by communicating what you need in your race car so he can help you get that. Another guy who seems to know what he needs around this place is Riley Herbs who won here last fall. He hasn't, he hasn't gotten left by these Gibbs cars and he's been hanging in lap time wise. Should be interesting to see, you know, as this track progresses, gets a ton of rubber on it. Where where does that go? Does that does that benefit Riley? We, we feel like he's got a long run car, not a short run car, but um, this track's definitely taking taking some rubber. And I think where things can get pretty interesting here too is long green flag run. They're going to have to pit. You're going to have to make a green flag cycle to, to to complete this stage. Who's willing to short pit? We talked about this clean air meeting so much. How many laps are you willing to short pit to try to gain control of this race? Might have to play defense later with, with a little bit older tire, but a couple laps on newer tires, you know, they've fallen off about a second and a half or so right now from their fastest lap. So, you know, there, there's there's opportunity if you pit the lap before you guy, you're going to get a second and a half a lap time. And that pit window that you're talking about as we stay under green here would open up somewhere around 140, 145 is what most crew chiefs said. So that's when we would anticipate scheduled green flag pit stop. Saw Jesse Love there and can't say enough about his growth today. Started 15th, worked his way into the top 10 and has stayed there. You know, someone someone that we, I think we missed the pass, but uh, all guy and Hill were running real close to each other for a long time. Justin passed Austin Hill. He's running faster than the leaders right now. Um, so I don't think we can count him out either, get a caution or a, a, a pit cycle here. Justin Allgaier is creeping into this picture for the win. You go to Allgaier last year, he had a penalty from the lead on a restart, middle portion of stage two, rallied back. And if he had another lap, he was going to beat Austin Hill a season ago. So you never ride off the seven until the race is done. And you mentioned caution. We've got one, fourth of the afternoon. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> Parker Retzloff in the 31, involved in an early crash, was already six laps down. Yeah, not, uh, you know, not certain what happened here. All his tires look up. Looks like he obviously was on pit road. Tried to get out of the way to help the race stay green, but I tell you what, here, 78 laps to go. This is definitely outside the window, but we saw how aggressive everyone was last week at Atlanta, how that race played out. And we should mention, everyone should have two sets of tires. So you pit here, you, you get your service, and you still have another set for a later pit stop. There's Alex Yance, crew chief for A.J. Allmendinger, who's six right you, now. You see that 31 laps to go, or 31 laps since they last pitted. I think you got to come in here and put four on, knowing that could be a two-tire stop you know, if there's something quick under green, possibly. Jeremy Clements, two laps down, but he's the first car in the lap down category, so he gets the free pass. He'll be one lap in arrears. Here's what we're talking about. Last week, Atlanta Motor Speedway, inside of five to go. The Ford started running out. Cole Custer, Riley Herbst was second. Eventually, Ryan Sieg stops on the track, so the caution comes out, and we went to overtime. And then more drivers start running out in overtime. <laughs> Austin Hill had saved the fuel. He wins. Jesse Love, who had dominated the race and run out of gas and finished outside the top 10. So close to that first career victory was the rookie Jesse Love. I think what this really all comes down to is how long this caution period is going to be. Are, if we're going to have enough green laps to 
where we can save fuel. No brainer, like Joey said to pit. We've got 30 laps on our stuff. We got two tires, two sets of tires laying in the pits. Easy call, put on tires, whatever else happens. But if this, if, if you get to where you're like a 65 lap run, you might want to try and stretch it. Pit road is still closed. That's good. When you talk about the fuel mileage situation, gives us a chance to remind you, spring football is about to hit a whole new level as the USFL and XFL come together to unleash the United Football League. Opening weekend kicks off March 30th on Fox with the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions taking on the XFL champion Arlington Renegades. The UFL this spring, ABC, ESPN, FS1, and Fox. We're just four weeks away, fellas, from getting it done. I just thought we got done with football. I can't believe we're getting more football. I love well, we, football. We got the combine going on. You got the draft cycle, free agency, you know, the UFL. We got, who do we we got it all. Are getting? Pick 15. That's who's right. You and getting? I, what about Brock Bowers? I love I love a good tight end. We need a tight end. We He's need a big guy. He's not just a tight end. He's a playmaking beast. We need that. We need that one. We got Pittman. We need, we need that other guy. You know who loves Brock Bowers? Who's that? It's going to be Austin Hill. He wears Georgia Bulldog call. shoes when he's driving the race car. Good call. Joey's lost. You he guys did. lost me since we started talking about soccer. So. Soccer. <laughs> Way to be disrespectful to everyone in that I'm conversation. I'm just kidding. Listen, all I want is four tires right here if I want the drivers. Pit roads open. Let's see who's taking this. Oh. 75 to go. Pit stops are huge here. Regan. Adam, the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger continues to have a solid day, but it's the same problem every stop for his car. He's tight in the middle, and it builds tight as the runs go on. They are a little outside of their window, and the 8 of Sammy Smith. Balance is good. Entry is stable. Just doesn't want to get it too loose. Josh? And the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek, the problem with him firing off free, getting worse during the run, so they're going to give him an air pressure adjustment as far as the 81 of Chandler Smith. He said he's really losing time in 3 and 4, also an air pressure adjustment to help him out. You want control when we return to the green flag. The race off pit road is going to be huge. And there Ooh. goes Nemechek jumping out in front of his teammate. Chandler Smith goes to second. Austin Hill is third. Herbst fourth. And Justin Allgaier lost a spot coming off the pit lane in fifth. Big restart when we return inside of 75 laps to go. The race today being dominated by Joe Gibbs Racing.
Ready to go back green at Las Vegas after our fourth caution of the day. Joe Gibbs Toyota's up front. Nima check Chandler Smith. And look who's laying in the weeds in third. Here we are heading toward the fourth quarter of this race. And it's Austin Hill who, of course, last year won early in the season at Daytona and Atlanta. This year he starts out 2-0 winning at Daytona and Atlanta. Race three this year, Las Vegas. Who won it a season ago? Austin Hill. Could we be set up for NASCAR history? in the Xfinity Series where a driver comes out of the gates and wins the first three races of the season. Well, that RCR pit crew's been doing a lot of good things for Austin Hill. And if they, uh, if they get late caution, I would, I would expect them to have a really great shot. So execution's a big deal in this game, for sure. It could happen. It's all gonna, uh, another huge restart, getting control again. We talked about the, how key it is to get this clean air. You think they're gonna play nicer? No. No. Answered that quick, didn't he? Better launch on the outside, a little more connected. 72 to go as we're green again. Almendinger gets put three wide. You see they're back there, three wide, pretty far back there. Everyone's getting aggressive now. Hey, Amarola's up in that mix. Austin Hill coming here. through in the outside lane. Not quite able to get clear. Chandler Smith really been able to have that entry speed, get himself clear again to go fight with his teammate. Meanwhile, Riley Herbst trying to survive. He's got Justin Allgaier on his outside. Allgaier came on really strong at the end of that last one, like I said. Gonna, gonna be, have to keep an eye on him. You said he needed a caution. He got it. Maintained track position. Whoa. A lot of dancing through the corner. As we focus on the lead and the teammates, Nemechek and Smith. They've led all but six laps today, that duo. Like we talked about the last run, this is all about getting control of the race. It seems like John Hunter's really able to get going on the first lap or so, but Chandler's got the, the whole run really figured out with this with this car. So he, he knows how critical it is to be able to get this pass done and, and, and walk away and manage the race. You know, this has been a, a great track over the years for junior motorsports. Sam Mayer, early exit. All Geyer from the back has been the real player, but Sammy Smith, who last year when he was driving for Gibbs, had pit road problems here, so he didn't get the fruits of his labor. Today has been solid. The second year driver from Iowa is now seventh and becoming a part of the conversation. I feel like we haven't talked much about him, but he's been solid inside the top 10 all day. First time with the new team, really first first real dance here at a, at a handling racetrack, and, and they haven't faded. They, they've had a solid weekend qualifying, check the box. First two stages, check the box, and, and is obviously doing a good job here solidly in the top 10. Kligerman is back. Racing Eric Almirola for position. That's the battle for eighth. Orange and white 48. Black number 19 is Almirola. I think his confidence is going to go straight through the roof when he gets some of this clean air. He's been stuck back, you know, outside the top 10. Really difficult spot to, to handle the car, figure out what your stuff's doing. And I think the further and further he gets up towards the front of the field, he's, he's going to have a good car, that's for sure. We talked about Eric's got to learn how to race an Xfinity car again. These things are so different, especially ever since NASCAR has gone to the next-gen car in the Cup Series. Xfinity and Cup cars couldn't be more different than they've ever been. The lanes you choose on restarts, the way you drive the car, what you look for over the course of a run, where the balance goes, couldn't be more different. So you really have to go through this whole learning curve all over again on what makes this type of car go fast. Herbst is now third, getting by Austin Hill, and just behind the 21, the 7 of Justin Allgaier. 98, he, uh, he's going to race like that. I'll make his life miserable. So I, I do know exactly what he's talking about. They had a bit of a uh, disagreement on who, who needed to be higher up on the racetrack heading into turn one. There was a bit of a door scuff going down the front straight away. I feel like that was probably more incidental contact, but uh, definitely got, got Justin's uh, blood pressure a little high. <laughs> Let's get an update on Eric Almirola aid right now, Josh. Yeah, to the point of what Joey Logano was just talking about in the booth when I talked to Almirola before the race, he told me yesterday he felt like a fish out of water when he hopped into that Xfinity car. He said they worked on it during practice and he felt much more comfortable going into the race. Now, during the race, there's been a host of issues he's been dealing with in terms of getting comfortable behind the wheel, getting comfortable with turns three and four. They've worked on it. They've worked on it. He's in a good place right now. He needs a little bit more, but he's much stronger at this point than he was at the start of the race. He's going to run 15 races this year. This week and next week in the 19. He's going to run a bunch of races in that 20 car as well. Brandon Jones top 10. Looking for his second top 10 run of the season. 
And he's trying to get his sixth consecutive top 10 finish at a mile and a half track. He's been so good in his career on the intermediates. Ryan Sieg's been solidly just just on that fringe top 10, whether if that's 9th, 10th, 11th, he's 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 had a really solid day here. And Parker Kligerman's a guy that's want to see him just break through this top 10 because he, he I feel like he has a really good idea of where he wants to put his car you know we talked about oh he wants to be at the bottom to start the race and then he, he figured out where the top was going to work when it did and now he's back to the bottom uh, I think I think he give him a shot at the at the right track position he'll, he'll know what to do with his car Jeb Burton needed it and he's getting a good run today 13th and about to go to 14th Haley Deegan on the move Regan Adam having a very strong day for Haley. Keep in mind, this is one of or this is the only track in the Xfinity Series that she has experience at running this race last uh, last fall when they came when the Xfinity Series came here. Right now in the car, she has been quiet all day long, checking with the team. They said she's been happy, she's been enjoying it out there, and she's having a good time on the track. You know what's great? Solid climb there. Well, it's when you can do it late, and it's a sign Absolutely. that you're a student of the game and you're getting better as the day goes on. Congratulations to her. And now the best rookie in the race, Jesse Love, has fallen back to 16. I mean, you look at the car she's in front of. I mean, she's in front of Jesse Love, you know, Josh Williams, some of these guys who got the or, you know, you know, great experience. So um, I think Haley's done a, done a solid job to progress through the field here, running, running 13th. It's a it's a solid day. Absolutely. Can't say I noticed where, where Jesse Love kind of kind of fell off of here. We were inside the top 10 and um, obviously back in 16th here. But uh, as you see, John Hunter is able to kind of get a bit away of, from 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 Chandler here. Probably one of the bigger leads he's had. Nima checks advantage seven tenths of a second over Chandler Smith. Riley Herbst is third. Austin Hill, Justin Allgaier complete the top five. 61 to go in Vegas.
when we went away, it was Joe Gibbs Racing 1-2, Nemechek and Chandler Smith, but there's a new driver in second. Here comes Riley Herbst by the 81. It's a good side draft and goes for it here. And something has happened to Chandler Smith to his race car, because he was obviously a dominant race car today, the best car on the track. Now he has slowed up to where he can't really run within a tenth and a half of the leaders. He's fallen back. Josh, you got an update? Yeah, and you see Chandler Smith losing spots. He just came over the radio saying, I have no lateral grip. Remember, they've been working on that car, making air pressure adjustments to try and help him out. But that last adjustment might have hurt him a little bit, guys. No grip. Hard to find the grip knob. It's weird. Sometimes you can just change a set of tires and you, the whole car changes. And you hate when that happens because you hate to blame it on a set of tires. But sometimes that happens and it gets confusing as you can imagine. Austin Hill's already run him down as well. And that, that pass that Riley Herbst put on him wasn't too long ago, but um, I, I think this this rear grip situation that, that Chandler Smith's dealing with, I think that might even force him into thinking about splitting the stage here. We, we were talking about strategy in the break, and, and if you're not happy with your car right now, you got one set of tires left, you know, you probably had, what, a 70-lap run to start this, you know, do you, do you take the risk of, of, of being lapsed down from pitting under green but it's it's tough it's got the green flag feel like we've talked about all day but you get that one caution that completely buries you there's no doubt if it, the fastest way to run this final run would be pitting around 35 or so laps to go split it up if it stays green that's splitting it right down the center come in put your four tires on under green they're like 10 laps short on fuel option b could be run long hope for a caution if not, come in late, maybe throw on a, a two tires and a quick splash and go and go that way. Probably not going to net out the same. But if you pit and the caution comes out and you're trapped down a lap, Done. it's a double negative because you're out of tires as well. That's your last set of tires, so you're really in trouble. So high risk play, but something that can maybe help you gain five, six, seven spots at the end of the race. Yeah, I think this, this pass is, is probably going to be inevitable. Um, you know, I think on the flip side of it, too, you know, it's whatever it's, it's, it's taken, they've made a few adjustments, and this one might not have worked out. That's called keeping up with the racetrack, and that's that's what experience is. And, and I think we need to throw a bone to John Hunter Nemechek because they weren't the best car. They weren't better than their teammates, and he's gotten better. And, and I think he's got the experience in these cars. He's obviously racing in the Cup Series now, but, but clearly has, has elevated themselves throughout the race, whereas um, yeah, now we see a car, that, a car that here. here. Sage Cameron, the 32, he's had a, down a tough day. day. Yeah, 46 yeah. laps in arrears. Struggled yesterday, practice qualifying. Had to start at the back of the pack this afternoon. He makes it to pit road. Stay green with 50, now 49 laps remaining. And Riley's not letting him get away. He's he's stalking the 20 car. I mean, one one bad move in lap traffic, you know, one one slip, you maybe your tires start going away. Riley's got a chance here at this thing. So he, as long as he stays relevant, stays within that one second, it's Formula One DRS range, but <laughs> what? I was watching the we're not I was, doing that. I was this watching is, the F1 this race is this so morning. so much better than that. <laughs> it is. I 100% agree. 100% agree. But uh, yeah, see, there we go. John Hunter got stuffed up behind that lap car trying to run the bottom, and boom, that's three tenths. He's never going to get back. Yeah, he picked up a quarter of a second there, and back behind them for third, Chandler Smith trying to hang on, but Austin Hill all over him on the backside. And this is where, okay, if you're John Hunter Nemechek, it, it, the crew chiefs right now have a big decision to make on when they when they pit here to try to leapfrog each other. You don't want to talk about it over the radio, right? You might say, oh, I want to talk to my driver and see what he thinks. Can't ask him right now because you don't want to even talk about it to each other. So it, it's something that, like, there's a code word maybe that could be thrown out there, and they're talking in codes while they're going up. 180 mile an hour, it's pretty crazy, but that's some of the stuff that can happen here. Here's strategy 81 radio, Chandler Smith. I'm thinking we need to be the first out there, road driver to make up what we've lost. Yeah, copy. That's yeah, a mature well, driver there, right? I mean, that's a good thought coming from behind the wheel. Well, you're Chandler Smith, you, you've had a great car. Your car obviously isn't balanced right right now. Uh, yeah, I want to come in. <laughs> you know you can be better. Stuff, right? You know you yeah. can be better. It's been it's been one of the best cars all day. So take your lumps and and, and doing that that uh, that undercut. You know we we've slowed down quite a bit since the start of this run. Our fastest laps are you know mid 30s, and we're 
high 31s. So you're going to get a big gain from that, and you're going to you're going to pull everyone back down pit road. He's still running third. It's not it's not like he's in the back at this point, but he wants to stop the bleeding because he, he knows he's he's got a car that's strong enough to be able to go win this race. If you're going to pull this strategy, you still got to wait another eight laps minimum, probably or so, somewhere around there, maybe six laps before because you, you want to split it down the center. We just missed getting in the window to be able to go the distance. When we got that last, our fourth caution of the afternoon, everybody pits, and as Joey said, right around 10 laps, give or take, short on fuel. We anticipate everybody's going to have to make a stop. It's how do you manage it and different schools of thought depending on where you are in the running order and how your car's handling. The thing for Chandler Smith right now, he's three seconds back. He's been kind of maintaining there. It's like he's kind of found something to where he can like yep. stop the bleeding. I can I can hold where I'm at. You get much further back than three seconds back. You're going to have to short pit him quite a bit to get ahead of him. I, I don't know what the right call is at that point. I think that's a great point, Joey, because you're right. I, I thought for a long time Austin Hill, that was just going to be an easy pass. It was just going to be, when, it, when is it going to happen? And he's pulled back away from Austin. And whether that's having a loose car with a tight build with the tires, but uh, it's it's definitely changing the integrity of this run. I think it changes, you know, this is your point where you can pass people back in a run where, where, where the tires really start to change with age, as you see A.J. Allmendinger going back around Sammy Smith. Forty-three laps to go. If you didn't join us from the top of the broadcast, early portion of this race dominated by Chandler Smith, qualified on the front row, won stage one, stage two. He's led 74 laps today, but the best of the bunch when it comes to laps led is his teammate, John Hunter Nemechek. He has taken over here in the final stage and been good throughout the afternoon. See the box score for the 21 year old from Talking Rock, Georgia, trying to get his second career victory in an Xfinity car. Isn't that find interesting? I don't know if the, the wind has died down a little bit or the track is cooling off. I mean, the, the top doesn't seem to be playing as big as it was. It's still a couple cars that are running the wall through the corner, but the fastest cars are all on the bottom now. Where we used to see, you know, we saw Kligerman up there really married to that wall. Yeah, you can see obviously it's still windy, but that tree's not laying over. If that's our that's how we measure the wind here on Fox and, and, and that right there. <laughs> not as windy as it was earlier. Okay. So it let's, could change the lines you're running. Let's pop AJ Allmendinger. So good to have him back full time in the NASCAR Xfinity series after he did that stint at the cup level for Colleg. He's been so much to this organization. And today his 101st series start through through 100 starts for Almendinger. He's collected 17 wins. That's impressive. And when you look at the best average finish through 100 starts, Almendinger on the board at 9.3. Who's the best of the bunch? I did that. <laughs> what, a guy. what a guy. Hey, I want to do some cool. Almendinger trivia. 17 career wins. How many would you say are on an oval because he did win here in 2021? Um, no, he's a great road racer. So, well, he's, well, I know how many road courses he won. It's like 12 or something like that. 12 on a road course, 12 you say? On a road so 12 course, out of 17. How many would you say? So you're saying five on 10. an oval? Yeah. He's won I feel like Austin really knows this, though, because yeah. he raced against he them all. He played it off them. pretty well. <laughs> Allmendinger, five of his 17 career wins have been on an oval, which is... Dude, did I nail that? No, it's six. I'm sorry, six. Oh, six. Yeah. damn it. So you had five. <laughs> You're right there. You did do your homework. Well, I know AJ and I were tied with the whole road course situation. I left, and he went straight up the charts here. So. <laughs> you drivers never I do remember forget. that. That's I do right. remember that. We've had this conversation. Yeah, six of 17, including right here at Las Vegas a few years ago. <laughs> A road course rivalry. Huh? Moral of the story is AJ Allmendinger's a stud, and no he one can is. convince me otherwise. Well, here we are. I'd say the pit window. If you're gonna split this in half, we're right around the number. I've been staring at that. I'd entry. be thinking about it. I've been staring at pit entry this entire time. It's, it's got somebody. Somebody's gonna jump. Somebody's gonna take the bait. And whether it's back here in inside this inside this top ten range, you know, these guys do they want to advance their position a little bit better and, and jump ahead. Or, or is it going to be one of our leaders? Is it going to be Chandler Smith? 
Um, if anything, he's actually been able to pull back in the lead here. And he was almost three and a half seconds back, and right. now it's you know 2.7. So over the course of the long run, Smith gaining some speed, staying in the game. Hurts another, really just not going away at all. Yeah, and really another factor too for a lot of these cars. Like if you're in dirty air and you're just kind of stuck, yeah, give it a shot. You know, if you got clean air and you're ripping and you know getting some good lap times out, maybe you would kind of prolong it and, and stretch it and you know not take the big risk if the caution comes out. It's Vegas though. Roll the dice. Right? It's all about the gamble when you come to Sin City. Nima check out front. The advantage just over a second with 35 yeah, to go. The, uh, and nine car on pit road. Here they come. Sounds like 81's Brandon, coming this time as well. Brandon Jones the first in the nine. You said it. Expect the 81 of Chandler Smith on board here with Austin Hill. We'll see what he does. This is going to pull everyone down pit road. Absolutely. The advantage is too great of having new tires and, and being on defense. Here Toyota comes. on board. Chandler Smith. Scheduled green flag pit stops here, Josh. Yeah, start with the 81 of Chandler Smith. We saw him lose a couple spots that last run. He was complaining about sliding those rear tires with that air pressure adjustment. As far as the 98 of Riley Herbst, his big complaint as he comes into pit as well has been three and four. He can't get what he wants at three and four. Hoping to help him out there. Regan? Eight car of Sammy Smith getting better as the day has gone on. The biggest dilemma, though, his car is not very good in dirty air and in traffic. The further forward he goes, the more he likes it. Riley Herbst was just over a second back of John Hunter Nemechek. He's going to make his pit stop. And we'll see how all this cycles out and what those fresher tires mean. Just a lap or two can be a huge deciding factor on the cycle of a green flag stop. The 20 car is still on the racetrack. He decided not to pit again this lap, so it should be a very good example of, of the overcut versus the undercut. But um, kind of crazy to me that the, the entire top 10 is pretty much pitted at this time, and, and, and the leader hasn't, which is trapping everyone laps down. And that might be his play. His play might be the opposite, where he's going to go long as he can, shorten up his pit stop with maybe just a splash and go and come out in the lead. There, these crew chiefs are calculating all this <laughs> up on top of the boxes saying, does this make sense? Which, which which way do we go? At this point, it's a gamble whether you come in or you stay out. At this point, it, you're risking it one way or the other. Leader is in now. John Hunter Nemechek doing it with 32 to go, Josh. John Hunter Nemechek putting together a strong race, 88 laps led. His big complaint was that he needs more front turn, guys. Well, it would be really interesting. You know, he stayed out, like you said, Austin, those couple laps. He's definitely lost time in those laps. He's got to execute on and off pit road. The pit crew has to nail this pit stop right here to even have a chance. Allgaier has stayed out. He takes over the race lead. He's in front of Almirola, Josh Williams, Sheldon Creed, Anthony Alfredo. All those drivers still need to make a stop. As Nemechek gets away, and you see the map up by the scoring pylon, top left of your screen, and we'll see the cycle here, watching where Nemechek is in relation to Riley Herbst. They were 1-2 when the cycle began. So Austin Hill's actually gotten in front of Riley Herbst, and uh, John Hunter's cycle has really, really worked out well for him. I don't know if they were in traffic, had to pass other lap cars, maybe that played a factor in the crew chief calling him in, but either way, John Hunter's still been able to re retain the lead of all, of all the cars that have pitted so far. So Hill in the exchange with Herbst, leapfrogs the 98, and both those cars will be behind Nemechek with the top eight vehicles still yet to make a stop. I'm going to say Nemechek did a really good job executing Absolutely. on and off pit road because the math would tell you if everything was the same, he lost the lead right there. But Absolutely. His team did a great job executing the pit stop. He must have done a good job on and off pit road to where even at the, the penalty of pitting two, three laps later and everybody, he's still in the lead. So that means he's gained over seconds of time on and off pit road. Yeah, and that and hot pit, pit road, road entry, it's something we look at quite a bit because we have a lot more opportunities at it in cup races. But in Xfinity, you kind of only have that one shot at it. And John Hunter's got a ton of experience. He's probably already got a mark picked out on the wall exactly where he needs to be. 
you know, I, I, as, wa as I was watching it, Riley seemed to be a bit soft in the hot pit road because he was, you know, already on the apron super early. So um, whichever way it cut it, 20 team did a great job executing there. Jeff Burton was in the top 15, but he was speeding when he made his stop. So a tough break for the 27, who was having a pretty good outing here today at Las Vegas. Justin Allgaier starts in the back after he had the tire issue yesterday in qualifying. Drives his way into the top 10, and he's now leading. When will he come to pit road? 27 to go. The drama unfolding here at Las Vegas for the Xfinity Series. For a second straight week, strategy creating drama in the latter stages for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. It was Nemechek and Herps 1-2 when the cycle began. Here's the pit comparison. Yeah, it's, it's, it's obvious that the 20 team just out-executed the 98 team, whether if it's driver, crew, all of it. And then we don't know how much traffic Riley got because there was about a second difference between Nemechek and Herbst when they came to pit road, when Riley pitted for the first time. And obviously John Hunter stayed out for a few laps. So I, I think Austin Hill and, and, and Riley Herbst, as you see him racing for position here still, I feel like they either got to racing right as they left pit road or they got some traffic and, and John Hunter was really able to, to, to take advantage. We're watching this battle under, under a commercial break here. Riley Herbst, pretty good, but boy, he's so married to one lane. And we talked about it earlier about how he's so predictable. Austin Hill's just been covering the bottom. Seven it, car pit road. Kyle Weatherman needed a pit. He's in, and so is the race leader. Here's Justin Allgaier coming for his scheduled service. That puts Josh Williams on point as Hill and Herbst continue to race one another. Yeah, Riley must have gotten to the outside of him because he, as we talked about, buried to the bottom and uh, you know set up on, the, on on his right rear heading into turn three he finally is able to climb up but they're gonna have some lap traffic ahead of here as uh, as they enter turn one yeah this is gonna be a, a, a tough pass here well you know who's loving this I mean Nima check he's like you guys have at it just just race each other back there and I'll continue oh, wow. oh, oh, no. Chandler Smith entering the conversation That's right Chandler back here. this is this is helping out Austin Hill this guy's a man on the mission. I wonder if his car's driving better. It's helping out Nemechek the most. Absolutely. <laughs> he's saying, all right, boys. Well, his I'll advantage was just over a second. And then oh, they started racing side by side. It's a lot. Nemechek's up by two seconds over 
Hill, Herbst, and Smith. And remember, he's got a little bit newer tires than these guys racing yeah. behind him as well. So he's got that advantage as well. He's gotten his lap back. The seven's pitted. He already unlapped himself. Um, I don't. I just don't see it how how it, how it works out for these guys that haven't haven't pitted yet. It's really only Josh Williams now. But you know, the 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 seven, the 19, and the 11, you know, all stayed on track significantly longer than the rest of the field. Whereas the the, the nine car, the eight, were all first to pit. You know, pretty much maintaining their positions. But these guys are racing the heck out of each other, knowing that they're kind of all racing for second as far away as the, the 20 cars got. I would say, though, you know, you race hard here and you get that caution, that that, that can be a huge difference maker. Absolutely. You know, only you're able laps to, left to get race. a restart and helps your position when it comes to the choose. I want to see a caution at the end of this thing when they all got old tires on. <laughs> this is the last set. That's There's all they left. got. What they got is what they got. <laughs> so a caution with old tires in the well, third Well, Josh Williams would disaster. still have tires. He's got, he, this is the gamble that he's taking right now. And hey, I love only, it. We only got 12 on the lead lap. Josh Williams, though, what a great story. He, he's a journeyman driver, someone that you would always see in the garage area working on his race cars. Always had, smiling. Yeah, had the huge incident last year at Atlanta where he parks it on the front straight away. And that afternoon, a star was born. But if you've been around, you know what a good guy he is. He's always going to local children's hospitals when the, we're on the road week to week. Gets a big opportunity for colleague, making the most of it. The, the season has not been great, but this weekend, He's worked his way through the field and now through strategy is leading late. And there's going to be 15 laps to go. When do they make their pit stop? Well, I like this call because he was running, you know, 15th ish, give or take. It, this is one way you're trapping down a lot of cars. So if the caution comes out, he's going to pit. The furthest back he's going to start is maybe 12th or 13th because that's how many cars are in the lead lap right now. And he's going to be the only car with new tires. He's going to drive up into the top five, most likely, if he has that big of a tire advantage. So right now, he's paying the price for a possible caution late. If there's no caution late, he's going to pay the price and never get the reward. If he does what everybody else does, he, he finishes outside the top ten. Yep. No doubt. He had led nine laps in his career coming into today. And this time around, it's going to be seven out front. He's from Port Charlotte, Florida. Josh Williams, 14 to go now. And time's running out for him. You know, they tell us when they started, everyone's about 10 laps or so short. Well, there's 14 to go. He really needs a caution right now. I'll be interested to see how, how well Allgaier is able to come back up. You know, he, he was running in the top five. Now he's in 10th. He's got quite a few cars. I'd say two positions he's going to be able to get here with probably a 10-lap tire advantage. You know, does it pay off? Does it minimize the damage? Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely a risk. I think that coming late call. You should look at all guy, 10th. Four runner up finishes at Las Vegas for Justin Allgaier. He and wife Ashley going to celebrate their anniversary on Monday. So we say happy anniversary to them. Love hanging with Justin in the garage because he's such Whoa. a fan of his kids and his daughter. Harper's always playing softball on the weekends. A little slide there for Nemechek. So right now, yeah, you see Nemechek, he's you know, six seconds from the lead. Obviously, we're pretty certain that Josh Williams cannot make it to the end of this race. So he's really looking at a, you know, a four second lead or so over Austin Hill. Things are looking pretty good for him at the moment. Cole Custer started on the pole. Getting ready to race his teammate for a spot in the top five. The reigning champ had finished outside the top ten in the first two races this year. Needs something good to happen, or it has this weekend. There he goes to the outside of the 98 of Riley Herbst. Yeah, this is a good little cluster here for uh, for kind of inevitably second on back um, with Hill, Chandler Smith, Custer, Herbst. These guys are kind of glued on top of each other. And you see Custer be able to make that move. You know why he passed those cars? Versatile. As we see, here it is, Josh Williams pitting. He comes in with 11 laps to go. That's going to turn the top spot back over to John Hunter Nemechek. He's going to have an advantage of about four seconds over second place Austin Hill with 10 remaining. 
they are just doing fuel only. So Josh Williams will be one of the only ones with with four tires left if, if there's a caution in, in, in the next 10 laps. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, their closest battles on track is definitely for that for that second position. You got cars buried, you know, re really over a blanket, you know, from Hill to Smith to Custer to Herbst. You know, Custer committed to the outside wall. Herbst committed to the bottom. Smith seems to just kind of go wherever he, he feels the most comfortable. You know, Custer's starting to be able to make that outside work as well. So I feel like it's kind of faded, but see that monster run he got from, from running that top lane. He's going to go back up here into, into one and two, just above those bumps, get some more momentum. You see that momentum come up. If I'm Chandler Smith's spot, I'm telling him, hey, this guy's coming pretty hard off the top, and, and I, I think he's going to have to either block it or just accept that it's going to happen. Yeah, that, that momentum he's able to get as he's getting blocked right here by a lap car. But that, that's what's helping Cole Custer right now. As these cars all caught traffic and started racing each other, they're all stuck on the bottom. He's got a car that I say can do more than one thing. Might not be the fastest car, might not be the best car, but it's able to go in different places. And when cars get stuck behind another one because they can't move around, that's where that double zero is better right now. There's a lot of lap traffic there between the two of them. I think, uh, I think this battle is still still heating up. As we see Chandler's also heating up Austin Hill. Oh, here comes a big run down the front straight here for Cole Custer. Where's he gonna go? Up Custer top. goes high. Looking outside of Chandler Smith. This for third. So Custer's gonna have Chandler Smith trapped and Chandler's also in dirty air. So he's gonna have the momentum off the top. Seems like he got stalled there somewhere along the way. Now, if you're Chandler Smith here, you know in front of him, he's got Austin Hill. He's going to follow him to the bottom. This is just opening the door for Cole Custer up top. He said, thank you. Besides the slap card, that's going to get a little sketchy for him. But look Whoa. at the run he's going to get. Yeah, I think Custer had to lift out of it there. He had such a huge run. I think that lap car made it tougher for Chandler to hold it all the way on the bottom. This is great racing with six to go. It's going to be fun to watch how this plays out. As these drivers race from second on back, the advantage for Nemechek right at five seconds. And there will be five laps to go when they come by the start finish line this time. There's Nemechek, and here comes Hill, Smith, and Custer, second, third, and fourth. We got that right rear one more time. Austin Hill's got to make a decision as well. He's going to go to the bottom. I think Cole's got enough, enough alongside of him to really be able to clamp him come back down and, and set his sights on uh, on the second place spot. I think this is a great recovery for this double zero team. These guys are champions for a reason, being able to, to kind of climb up. They've been outside the top five most of the day. And uh, you know Cole's been able to find a lane that works for him that no one else is in, being able to be versatile, like you said, Joey, and be able to make up, uh, up, a, up a pretty solid result here as he ducks to the inside, thinks he's going to get the side graph, cuts Clear. the distance. P2. Got him. It's so, so much fun when you get your car working up against the wall. You just push it up against there and let it rip. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun when you got one that can do that and no one else can really pull that off. You're just able to go race well. Chandler Smith following through Austin Hill. Joe Gibbs racing today has been outstanding. Early portion of the event belonged to Chandler Smith. Winning stage one, stage two. Final stage has been all about John Hunter Nemechek. Three to go. And the coach's kids leading over 170 laps this afternoon. I, you, I know it's too late as he's five seconds back, but Cole Custer's two and a half tenths faster than Nemechek running that very high line. I think it begs the question, you know, what's what's changed with the track? What's what's changed, you know, throughout the race that that, that can happen? Or is it just because no one else is up there right now? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> With an advantage like this, you just want to make sure you get back to the white flag. We don't get a caution over time and a restart. Oh, as we've been sitting back here enjoying that battle for, for second, third, and fourth, John Hunter's been hoping that that does end up in a wreck. That's right. Because he's just waiting to hear the words caution. He doesn't want to hear that. He All he wants to hear is take the white, bring it back to me. Off of turn four, he'll see the white flag this time around. Up here, white here, white flag at the line. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. John Hunter Nemechek, full time at the Cup Series now. One here at Vegas in a truck back in 2021. His dad Joe won here in an Xfinity car in 2003. 
Nemechek has been special today. Leading just shy of 100 Hell laps. Oh, yes, boys. Tenth, Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Tenth career victory. Nemechek cashes in at Vegas. They did a great job. They executed the race very well. I obviously had a really fast race car, but they executed the race well. The much, much deserving winner. What I do like seeing in, in our, our, our guard, it took the risk in Vegas, Josh Williams, P14. Not bad. Extra set of tires, too, to bring home. Yeah. Saving a buck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Custer ends up second. Chandler Smith, great day. Leading 74 laps is third. Austin Hill will have his unbeaten streak to start the year end here in Vegas, but he was fourth, another top five. Riley Herbst fifth as he tried to go back to back in his home track. John Hunter Nemechek gonna burn it down here at Vegas. Oh yeah, I love a good burnout. To grab go. gear. Uh, they'll blow apart if you grab second gear. You got to let her last a little bit. When I, when I drove these cars, I'd always see if I could get to fourth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really solid effort. John Hunter and his team really earned this one. Like I said, Joey, just great execution. And, and that's that's what it takes to, to be consistently dominant at this level as he try, oh, stalled it. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to put it right on the line. <laughs> Did everything else perfect today, though. <laughs> Four wins for Joe Gibbs Racing. Second among active teams here in Las Vegas. Gonna go get that checkered flag. Get that flag. Nemechek back in the Xfinity Series running part time, and it's back to victory lane. Regan Smith down there waiting on him. John Hunter Nemechek getting the helmet off after what seemed like a nearly perfect day. John Hunter, you guys start 12th, you find your way to the front very quick, and it just seems like you guys couldn't make a misstep. At the end of the race, this car was dominant. Yeah, uh, hats off to all the guys on this 20 team from Joe Gibbs Racing. Man, it's uh, it's awesome to come back out here and win in the NASCAR Xfinity Series with limited number of starts. Our goal was to come and win as many as we possibly could. Nothing else matters. So um, congrats to uh, Tyler, uh, who's crew chief this year on the 20 car. His first uh, win as a crew chief, uh, our spotter, Ryan Blanchard, his first win as well. Um, have to say hello to Aspen and Penelope back home. Sadly, they're not here to celebrate, but Taylor is. So uh, we'll go celebrate in Victory Lane. Uh, man, it feels so good to win here in, in Las Vegas and uh, got some reps for tomorrow, so I'm excited. John Hunter Nemechek, your Xfinity Series winner in Las Vegas. Well, Chandler Smith led 74 laps, comes home third today, and it seemed like towards the end, that second to last stop, you lost a little something. What happened? Yeah, uh, no, we just over adjusted a little bit. Um, trying to stay ahead of the racetrack and it feels actually like it may have gotten a little colder as well So uh, I felt like the track definitely freed up and we went in that same direction thinking it was going to tighten up so um, You live and you learn and uh, I'm extremely proud of the effort that we brought here this week in our number 81 quick tie product Toyota GR Super was as fast as Xfinity internet and uh, we showed that uh, We were pretty dominant and then we just over adjusted. I'm, I'm happy that a Joe Gibbs racing car still won though So congratulations John Hunter Three top tens to start the year for Chandler Smith, guys. He's been impressive in his new ride, no question about that. Fun day here at Las Vegas for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and we look forward to a great afternoon tomorrow as the cup cars hit the track. Race day starts on FS1 at 2, race day at 3, cup race at 3.30 on Fox. Good luck to the two of you. Nice afternoon here, and here is what's on tap tonight on FS1. Got some college basketball coming your way next. We're in the Big East, Xavier and Georgetown.
And then it's rugby, the NRL, the Sea Eagles, and the Rabbitohs, followed by the Roosters and the Broncos. With Joey Logano, Austin Sendrick, Regan Smith, Josh Sims, I'm Adam Alexander. Thank you for watching in Vegas. Congratulations, John Hunter Nemechek. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.